What is the goriest thing you have seen in real life? Not safe for work. Warning. Viewer discretion is advised. Please do like, share, and subscribe. My wife and I were heading to the beach at 2.30 in the morning. She was asleep, the highway was empty, it was pitch black, and I drove up on debris all over the road and a single car in the median. I wake her up to call 911, and I pull over and run over to the car. All I can hear is the dinging of the door being open and the GPS saying, make a U-turn. Scary as shit. I pull out my phone light to see and the car was empty and completely destroyed. There was a tractor trailer coming at 70 miles per hour, so I started jumping up and down, waving my hands for it to slow down. As it got closer, I saw the guy's body in the middle of the road. The tractor trailer sped up and ran him over, then never stopped. His body was bent in a 90 degree angle at the hip and destroyed. I was in a state of shock. I couldn't walk any closer to the guy and I waited for the cops, so I can't give you any more gore details, but I can imagine it would have been quite disturbing. I worked for the sheriff's office years ago. We had a helicopter crash on Marsh Island in South Louisiana we responded to. Half-burned bodies busted open with intestines spilling out. Was playing tag with a friend, and as I was chasing him, a kid swinging on the monkey bars who was wearing his soccer cleats kicked half of his face off. It basically tore the skin down from his eye to his chin. Blood sprayed all over me. Six-year-old me freaked out and thought my friend was going to die. They wound up being able to stitch him back up and he made a full recovery. He's got a pretty cool scar over his eyebrow because of it. Near where I live, a 17-year-old boy went missing. A week later, I was on a walk and as I walked past a bush, I was hit by a strong smell. I looked into the bush and found a bag full of severed human body parts. It turned out the boy had been killed and butchered and I found his remains. I was treating a patient with a sublingual tumor. Basically, the cancer ate through the bottom of the mouth and her tongue and would hang out the bottom and saliva would drop everywhere. Had to MacGyver a catchment device that was portable and as discreet as possible. Either that or watching another patient rip open her own abdominal stitches with her bare hands and proceeded to shove her arm a little over mid-forearm deep. When I was a kid, a girl jumped from the top of a building. She happened to land a few meters away from me, so I saw the whole thing. The worst part wasn't the blood, twisted limbs, or matter on the floor. It was the sound. I still remember it to this day. Since the impact didn't kill her immediately, she was sort of wheezing for a little while. Still gives me nightmares some nights. Me and my friends were little shits growing up, finding abandoned homes to party in. Someone mentioned a place that was ripe. We break in, no electricity. Start to set up smoking material, when someone complains about the smell. This was before mobile homes, so there was little to no light. Found a bloated dead body, fused into the sofa and running alive with maggots. It was horrific. Left, was sick, and phoned the police. Three things, all from the restaurant industry. One, co-worker was changing the fryer oil. Slipped when carrying the old hot oil out to the disposal and dumped it all over himself. Two, Saw another co-worker's arm get stuck in a pizza rolling machine. Degloved his entire arm up to his elbow. 3. Saw someone's hand get wrapped around the dough corkscrew on a commercial stand mixer. Snapped the bones in his arms like toothpicks. I think he ended up losing the arm. Kitchen work ain't no joke. Came up on a car accident many years ago. Two cars hit offset at highway speeds. The engine of the smaller car, 90 Saturn Coupe, was laying in the road. I went up to the Saturn first. The steering wheel was pushed up against his chest. Both of his legs were mangled and he had bones sticking out of his left leg just above the knee. He was breathing, but barely. Red foam coming out of his mouth and nose. I was on the phone with 911 when he stopped breathing. The guy in the other car was also badly injured. He was awake and talking, but not making any sense at all. He had some bad cuts on his face and his left arm was almost completely severed. The dispatcher walked me through putting a tourniquet on his arm. I also took a coat out of my car to help keep him warm. It was extremely cold out, probably around negative 15 Fahrenheit. From what I later found out, that guy died later during the helicopter flight to the hospital. He was the sober one. 
when I was six. Me and my twin brother were walking home from school. Home was only a block or so up the road. While we walked, I was up on the grass and he was on the sidewalk relatively close to the road. A drunk driver came by and hit him. I'll never forget what the body looked like. The impact sound the car had made when it hit him or the sound of some woman and other children screaming behind me. Before I'm asked, yes, they found the guy. Yes, he got charged. Yes, he went to jail. My mom shared some details with me later. He was going 94 kilometers an hour in a 40 kilometer an hour school zone. Apparently, in the hour leading up to him hitting my brother, there were four people that called into the police station to report him for suspected impaired while driving on the highway. People in my hometown got together and paid for the funeral or wake. I'm from Newfoundland. In the small towns and villages, traditional Irish wakes are still common. Casket, headstone. Didn't happen to me, but to a colleague who witnessed everything. There was Carnival in Cologne, a festival Germans living near the Rhine celebrate every year. There was a group of three girls, very, very drunk, stepped over the connection of a tram to get to the other side of the street. Two of them made it. The third one fell into the connectors and got literally carried away piece by piece. The driver of the tram didn't notice it and was contacted to stop immediately. Body parts and blood was everywhere. The cleanup team searched for the head for eight hours until they found it under the tram. The hair got tangled in the tires. The colleague was traumatized and couldn't attend work for over six months due to witnessing every little detail. I watched a dude hang himself off a bridge. The cable or force caused his head to pop off and the body basically pancaked when it hit the water. We then proceeded to spend the next five hours alongside the sheriff's department searching for any form of remains. When I got cut on new play equipment on the opening day of a park, the edge of a spinning thing wasn't sanded down and it cut me to the bone on my leg. Seeing my own fat pour out was scary. 32 stitches. 20 years ago, I found my dad dead on his bedroom floor. He was laying naked and face down. An autopsy revealed he died from a brain swelling or something due to his Parkinson's disease. I had a key to his house and went to see him one day. I knew immediately something wasn't right as I called for him as I let myself in and he didn't respond. His car was outside and I knew he wouldn't have gone out anywhere without it. Moreover, it was middle of summer and windows were shut and there was just an eerie silence as I walked around looking for him. He had a frosted type glass bedroom door panel and the door was almost shut but I could see someone laying down. Could tell he was naked and that was how I knew before I opened that door I'd find him dead. I knew if he'd fallen or something and was conscious he'd be mortified me seeing him naked like that and he'd alert me not to come in or something. I don't know. So I knew he was dead before I opened the door. I'll never forget that day and how I went into some autopilot mode calling 999. He'd not been there too long, but long enough for some of the rigor mortis to set in. Purple patches on body. Guy decided to slide down a big snowfield on his bum. Couldn't stop before he hit the rocks at the bottom, caught himself with his feet, and popped both kneecaps open like eggshells. An infected mesh implant from the time of the Vietnam War comes to mind. A patient came in complaining of mild neuro symptoms and the surgeon did a craniotomy. PT had a prior bullet wound from his time in Vietnam and they had placed a mesh implant to protect him. It got infected, but he didn't know about the infection for decades. All the staff got to see and smell what the mesh and surrounding tissue was like. I truly cannot describe the smell. There was nothing like it to me, ever. Seeing a politician's foot after he was blown up, George Howey. This was in Lebanon. I was buying pizza near the place of explosion and I was 13 years old back then. As a child, I saw a kid attempt to climb up a water slide as a little girl slid down. The kid's knee hit her mouth and she lost most of her teeth. I was young myself, but the bloody water coming down the slide, the girl's cries and the following hour me and my friends spent looking for her teeth in the splash pool is still very clear in my mind. Later, I was told the majority of her teeth were fitted back into her mouth by a local dentist, but I was skeptical and thought this might be a white lie to make me feel better. If any dentists are able to confirm if this is possible, that would be appreciated. I was working, doing drain clearing when I was young. One day I got called out to a job on a small sewer drain. 
I could see where the blockage was, so I went and pulled the manhole downstream up and the high-pressure self-propelled hose in and sent it upstream. I hit the blockage and water flowed to where I was, so I pulled the hose back and the water stopped flowing. I sent it up again and same thing, I had flow, pulled it back and it stopped again. So I walked up to the upstream manhole and lifted it. What I saw was a hessian bag and I could see a tuft of hair sticking out, short blonde hair. Earlier that day, I was talking to a plumber who had a friend who, I have no idea why this came up in conversation, had found a baby in a manhole. So with that fresh in my mind and quite freaked out, I opened the bag to find a dog partly decomposed, enough that if you touched it, the skin and hair would split and fall off. Who the fuck puts a dog, I hope dead, in a fucking manhole? And guess who had to deal with that shit? I don't know, man. I was an EMT for a few years, so there's a bunch of stuff that's all blurs. A whole family, parents, child, infant, all dead in a minivan after being T-boned. A teenager and his 10-year-old brother after their truck got ripped in half by a semi that ran a light speeding. 20-year-old who suicided by shotgun just before Christmas. I was a rookie on the job for like a month in his driveway with mom inside the house. I know what a four-month-old fetus looks and smells like. I would smell it for months after the call. One of the paramedics at my service shot himself in his truck in the parking lot while his partner was getting ready to start shift. Stabbings and shootings. One summer there was a gang war, so we had those every night for a while. Katrina evacuations. Nothing gory, but fucked up all around. Unfortunately, I was taking pictures of an abandoned factory for a high school project, and I found a dog that was completely gutted and wrapped in duct tape. I literally just stood there in shock for a few minutes while trying to process what I was seeing. I told my mother what I saw, and she said it was probably a warning to someone, and that I shouldn't go back, and I never did. Not seen, but felt. Many moons ago, I was doing my trauma rotation in nursing school. One of the big local businesses was a crane factory. A worker fell 20-something feet, landing on his back. My let the student do something relatively harmless task was to stabilize his cervical spine by holding his head in my hands when he was rolled around for the trauma assessment. As I was cradling his head, I realized it felt like a cracked, soft-boiled egg. All the little fragments of crushed skull just mushed around in my hand like pieces of eggshell in a fleshy sack of goo. Twenty years on, I've seen plenty of visually disturbing gore, but that's one of the few tactile memories that actually gives me a bit of the jeebies. I saw a trauma once where the guy had shot himself in the head with a shotgun, only he had pointed it under his head, thus destroying all suborbital structures including his mandible, most of his maxilla but preserving his carotid and vertebral arteries and most of his brain and spinal cord. Somehow, he was able to be stabilized, and thus he showed up in the ER with his eyes dangling down in a macerated mass of flesh that used to be his tongue, mouth, lips, pharynx, and ethmoid sinus. He was still wiggling around and hemodynamically okay. Couldn't scream because his larynx was destroyed, Anesthesia came and somehow intubated this guy. Not sure what happened to him subsequently, but I think he survived. I found my dad dead. He'd probably been like that for about three days, either heart attack or stroke. They didn't do an autopsy. It wasn't that bad. Smelled a little. My mom shot herself in the head about 20 feet from me. I had my back turned, so I didn't see all of it. I got little glimpses as I called 911, and then once the police showed up to deal with it, there was matter left on the porch from where they carried her out. I'm really not sure if it was someone's puke or brain matter. I watched somebody get decapitated. They were speeding and doing a wheelie on a motorcycle and went head first into the trailer of a turning truck. Bike and body kept going forward. It was a high set trailer. Head went upward and backwards. Lots of blood. I called my boss's boss to let him know what I'd witnessed. Someone else was calling the cops. He responded by telling me the best thing to do was to shake it off and focus on work. Nice. I'm a medical malpractice attorney, so I've seen some shit. Fasciotomy cases are wicked. Necrotizing fasciitis is brutal. A stump right after amputation with stitches everywhere. Infection following mastectomy, where you can't tell 
a breast ever existed because all you see is a festering wound. But the worst, I'd have to say, is bed sore cases, especially because so often it is elderly people that have them. So necrotic, black, oozing, giant holes in grandma and grandpa's genital areas. It's always pure gore. My godfather's face, which was completely disfigured after he was killed in an accident, he was working in the Gulf at the time, and late one night his car hit a camel at a very high speed while he was driving back to his accommodation. He died on the spot, and his body was brought home to Mumbai for burial days after. I was around six or seven at the time, and when his body was brought home, my godmother couldn't restrain herself from embracing him. She lifted the white cloth he was wrapped in to see him one last time, and that's when I saw him too. His face was beyond recognition breaks my heart every time I think of it, even 30 years later. Dead and dying people in a field in Iraq after a battle. The ones that were still alive were crying and bandaged up by the side of the road. The doc was bandaging up as many as he could. I still can hear their sobs. While deployed in Iraq, I saw a truck full of Iraqi police get obliterated by a VBIED. Nearest, we could tell, there was 23 people in the truck. This was after collecting all of the extra body parts that couldn't be attributed to whole people. It was a fucking mess. A few years ago, me and my dad were heading through the hills after a trip to a nearby town, and the road through the hills are very quiet in terms of traffic and very technical. Lots of drivers speed because the road is so quiet. After rounding a hairpin, we saw a wreck in front. A ute pickup truck had slammed nearly head-on into a Toyota Yaris. The ute was barely okay. Front was a crumpled mess, but it was structurally sound. The Yaris looked like it had been hit by a wrecking ball. The front end was just mangled. One of the front wheels was in the ditch at the side of the road, and the suspension was resting at an odd slumped angle. The ute driver was bloodied a bit, but still lucid and conscious. He was kneeling by the side of the Yaris and looked like he was crying. Dad immediately stopped the car by the accident and got out to try and help. I went over too and sometimes still wish I hadn't. The back window had an L-plate, signifying a learner driver, and the driver was slumped over the wheel unconscious. A girl, dark hair, pale skin, maybe 17 or 18, cut up six ways from Sunday, and her legs crushed by the car's collapsed foot well and dashboard. A woman in the back seat was still conscious, sat behind presumably her daughter. She was opening her mouth without making much of a sound at all in mute grief, which scared me. I thought crash victims who were conscious were supposed to bawl and sob. This is why I never watch car crashes on TV anymore when I can help it. The mother was reaching out for the front passenger seat, which was where the kneeling guy was hunched over, saying he'd already called 111. He was breathing quickly and shuddering. There was a lot of crushed metal as the ute had hit the front passenger first. I assumed from the side of the head that I could see that the front passenger was the father of the driver, there was a lot of blood, like an explosion of it, and lots of weird dank stains. His left arm was sort of hanging off under what was left of the center armrest. He was definitely not breathing. I didn't see anything else, as my dad ordered me in a very quiet voice to head back to our car, call 111, explain what happened, and stay put. I never did find out if the girl survived. I asked dad, but either he doesn't know or he refuses to talk about it. I was a policeman for many years and attended some bad, violent crime and accident scenes. Train accident scenes were the worst. One involved a passenger who fell between a moving train and the platform. She was rolled along the length of the platform, crushing everything inside of her, until she slipped deeper and deeper down and ended up under the wheels of the train. There wasn't much left to be collected, to be honest. <laughs> 